have it everywhere really is about connectivity and closing the gaps of communication during production and as well as to your audience. We've introduced what's called the Media Central Platform. And this is an architecture that includes connectivity toolkits, administrative tools, new metadata schemes um, for allowing people to collaborate more seamlessly, not just with Avid products, but with all products. Obviously a big part of collaboration is monetization. We want to be able to make money off the content that we make. So we've introduced what's called the Avid Marketplace. It has both a private component where people can collaborate together, as well as a public component where you can sell the content that you create. One of the things that we've done in association with um, this new Media Suite platform is some rebranding and, and recategorization of the products that we sell. For example, people that are familiar with Media Composer and Pro Tools, um, those are categorized in what we call the Artist Suite. So those are traditional creative tools. On the video side, uh, speaking of the rebranding, we've taken our Interplay Sphere product and renamed it Media Composer Cloud. And the reason being is most people didn't understand what Interplay Sphere meant, and you would end up saying, it's like Media Composer editing, but in the cloud. Um, so what this allows you to do, and this has been shipping for some time, is that a facility can have uh, Avid's Interplay solution, as well as Media Composer Cloud, uh, the server, and any Media Composer user anywhere in the world can connect to that server and participate in editorial. So using streaming proxies, they can edit just as if they were in the facility. You know, for some systems where if you want to edit remotely, it requires a pretty large pipe to be able to play back the proxies. For us, we scale down to about between two and five megabits a second. Um, so obviously the picture quality is not going to be eye-popping, but it's going to be good enough that you're able to edit. Um, you know, if you have something as small as a 4G cell signal, you'll be able to still collaborate and edit remotely. Media Central UX is a rebranding of our Interplay Central product. This is for non-editors. So if I'm using Media Central UX, um, I can use any you know, use my browser. I just need a VPN access to the facilities interplay system. Um, I'm presented with a browser that gives me basically access to all the material that I have permission to. Uh, I can then go in and make my own sequences. I can review and improve existing sequences. I can add markers and provide comments. Um, basically, everything that you would need to do as part of the production process without getting into the deep creative tools that you would find in a Media Composer or a Pro Tools. And of course, with Media Composer, the big announcement is the move to a subscription-based model. Um, the difference with us, as opposed to other companies that do subscription, is that you can still buy the product. If that's your preferred method, you can buy the product outright, or you can subscribe on a monthly or annual basis. And of course, the subscription um, also includes uh, uh, support with Avid. On top of that, we're introducing a floating license model. So for educational institutions, for reality TV, for any kind of enterprise client where they want to be very cost conscious about how much money they spend on editorial, they can buy a group of licenses. Let's say I want to buy 20 licenses and any editor can log in and pull a license at any time up to that 20. And as soon as they shut down Media Composer, that license is freed up again. Media Composer Cloud and Media Central UX, those are existing products that you can work with. Of course, if you want to take advantage of new features as they come out, you do need to get into a subscription model or, or just by buying support. If you buy support, support comes you know, for the year with free uh, upgrades. As the cloud becomes more and more of a reality, uh, you, know, you have very large companies like Amazon offering cloud services, but you know, most studios, most production entities still feel better about, no, I want to have the media in-house and allow people to access it here. So what we do, it's a, a private cloud. We find that most video professionals right now, most companies don't want their media assets in a public cloud environment. They want to have them on a server in their facility. So that's considered a private cloud where I can access it from anywhere as long as I'm given the permission to do so.